Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about stick welding an aluminium boat and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. The purpose of this video really is to see whether it's possible for your average guy to stick weld aluminium. Now, I've never done this before, so it's a real experiment for me. And look, I know it's possible. There's definitely videos on people stick welding aluminium. And the main reason I want to experiment with it is because my little stick welder, really light, really small, no gas bottle, boats here live on the water. So if you need to go to the boat and weld instead of taking the boat to the workshop, if it turns out to be, you know, something that works okay, it's probably going to save a lot of time. So let's see how it goes. All right. Let's open up this package, which I'll order online, uh, see exactly what they are, can't remember what brand they are, and then we'll give them a run on some test metal and see what results we get. All right, so Hampton, 4043, 2.4 mil. All right, I'm gonna grab a bit of aluminium and then I'll put a flap disc on the grinder so we can get that oxide off. The coating, the oxide coating on aluminium is very hard and has a much higher melting point than the aluminium below it. So really good to get it off when you're welding. Here's the scrap of aluminium I'm gonna use. It's uh, probably two and a half mil thick, something like that. We could have a look, couldn't we? Uh, no, three and a bit mil thick. The welder I'm using is this little Boss Weld. Nothing fancy about it, very cheap and cheerful welder. Got it from Bunnings, 150 bucks or something like that. This is gonna splatter a fair bit from what I've heard, so let's grab at least a jumper. <laughs> bit of protection. What should we do? Let's go across the top first, see how that goes. I've heard that preheating the job can make a huge difference, so I might take a torch down to the boat itself just to give us the best chance of getting a good weld. All right, let's clean up the surface first, and then do a few test runs. If anyone knows why this hanging grinder doesn't work without a battery, let me know in the comments. It's always having that trouble. Hopefully you can see here it goes through a few different colours. This is the natural oxidised colour. Here's where it's sort of partially off. And here's where you're down to clean metal. So this is where we'll weld. Definitely hard to weld with. I'm gonna try higher amps, see how that goes. Sweating so much I can't see a thing through the mask. Let's just trust the gloves will do the job. It's definitely much harder than steel rods, but I refuse to give up. First two observations are that it's really hard to hold an arc, but not impossible. So I think with practice, might actually make me a better welder because you obviously need to be really precise with this where you can be a bit more, you know, lax with your gap on steel. So that's taking practice, but also it burns through the rod really quickly, which perhaps is also making the, you know, holding the arc harder because, you know, the rod's disappearing on you so fast, you've got to move in a lot more quickly. Uh, but I think it's one of those things. I remember when I did my course for TIG welding, and they talked about the difference between steel and aluminium. They said a lot of people say aluminium is really hard. It's because they've welded steel so much and it's actually just different. It's a case of saying, oh, you move really quickly. Okay, I'm used to that now, moves quickly. Let's burn another rod, see what happens. At the end, I'll show you all my different efforts. Uh, hopefully you'll see enough progress. Actually, I'll show you where I'm at now. It's pretty bad. Flat is what it is. 
you may have noticed I'm using a lot more sort of webcams in the workshop these days, and that's because my intention is to do a lot more public live streams in the future. So consider this like a recorded practice for that. Anyway, here's the ugliness. Uh, this was my first little run. These are all my splatters where I was sticking the rod and doing all sorts of things. Um, I think this was a bit too hot. We are now on, mm, what's that sort of, <laughs> it's interesting. So 20 between that, 30 between that. I don't know, your guess is was mine. 80, 85 amps for 2.5 mil rods. But, you know, this was an okay run. That actually looks a little bit cold, but I keep losing arc. Then it looks quite hot, it's quite wide. This is the thing about aluminium as well. It's all really cold until suddenly it's in a molten puddle on the floor. You don't, it sort of sneaks up on you. But that's okay. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to clean up the rest of this and just keep practicing. I watched a video of Jody's, which is weldingtricksandtips.com. Great guy, excellent welder, great videos. Highly recommend checking him out uh, if you want to see it done properly. For me, this experiment's more a case of can a guy who's not a great welder actually use this equipment? Because for me to take these little rods and that little welder down to the beach is gold compared to getting the big heavy TIG welder and the Argon. And then of course I'm outdoors, so if it's a windy day, issues again. Anyway, so if you want to see a, uh, a, a professional effort at welding with aluminium rods, I'll put a link to his video as well. It's also worth noting uh, a hull is probably thinner than this. Hull's probably, you know, under two millimeters thick, whereas this is three point something apparently. The welding I need to do is on the bowsprit and some ribs, some thicker parts. That's what makes me think this might be a good way to go given the boats down on the beach here on the island. All right, I'm going back in. Wish me luck. Hmm. Hard. You certainly burn through these rods fast. You see the amount of smoke coming off these things. Huge amount of slag. Burn really fast. Oh, Daffy, what are you doing? You've got next door. Oh, man. Now we go chase my chickens. What are you doing, Daffy? Come back. Oh, Daisy. You're teaching her bad habits. I'll be back. The pride in my uh, longest run so far was very short-lived because the heat built up and it burnt through. Obviously I can drop the amps, but it's made me realize it really is just a case of practice because you just move so fast. The whole rod is gone in 10 seconds. <laughs> like it's really bonkers quick. But, um, you know, once you get used to that, you sustain an arc. Otherwise I find the gap's getting too big, I'm losing the arc, so that's okay. So I guess next step is practice the right technique, moving really quickly, but with lower amps, so we don't do this, or I'm gonna actually have to do just short sections, let it cool while I'm actually working on the real job. Because one of the repairs on the boat is a vertical up, I'm gonna practice some vertical up in the workshop first before heading down to the boat. It's the funniest slag too. You can see it's all got moisture around it this morning. It's all really wet. Everywhere there's a, oh, where am I? Yeah. Everywhere there's a drop of this slag, there's a little puddle around it. It's obviously very uh, absorbent. So, started a little bit straight here, a bit of a bulb, but then just did a little bit of a weave towards the top. And you know, not too bad really. It all happens at a million miles an hour, but you do get used to it. I'm starting to feel like these rods are gonna be useful. Uh, there's obviously a bit of a learning curve, but because I feel like I'm getting the hang of it, I've gone and ordered a larger packet of them because I think I'll get value out of them. Definitely gonna keep them in the rod oven because they seem to absorb moisture like hugely. As you saw, the slag is just dripping and even the rods that were still in the packet were still a bit moist. So I've put them in the oven for a while. The rod I used there was one that was left out and had been in the oven for maybe only 10 minutes. Uh, but I think that's where I'm gonna keep them when the new packet arrives. All right, 
I think we're feeling ready. Let's go down to the boat and see how we go there. All right, this is the rib we're welding back in. I think we've got a good chance of success. Really easy to access and, uh, you know, on the rib, even if you accidentally blow a hole, it's not through the hull. So I'm going to get the flap disc onto here, here, and the rib itself. And then we'll just see if we can crack out a couple of uh, in position welds to get this back in before the floor goes back in. I probably shouldn't have my feet in the water while I weld this, should I? That doesn't sound like a particularly smart thing to do. It was quite a foggy morning this morning, but it's starting to clear now, which is nice. All right, clean this up with a flap disc. Got a little bit of a V in it. Let's give it a go. Somebody's bound to mention that the abrasive on these flap discs, I think, is actually aluminium oxide, but definitely does the trick. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more runs just to be sure. It's a bit of a case, you know, if you can't tie knots, tow lots. I'm taking that approach to welding on this. I think I'm gonna try a little bit hotter. Normally when a rod burns really fast, you're thinking it's too hot. That's why it's just disappearing on you. But in this case, it disappears on you quite quickly, but I actually think it's too cold. All right, let's go up 10 amps, see what happens. Because it was getting very lumpy, I've ground it down. But it's also a kind of a chance to check porosity on it. This started with a V. You can see it's cold, it's sort of built up here. So I think it can go hotter again. It's hard. Uh, I think preheating it might help because your first weld's terrible. Um, then you get some heat into the metal and the next one's better. So. I should have got that gas torch off Renko, but it's not gonna go anywhere. You know, I think it's strong enough. That's a V filled up with very little porosity. So I'm kind of happy that it's, you know, it's definitely not going anywhere. I think we have a crack at the bow sprit, which is all bent up, it needs to be hammered down and then welded up. See how we go. Is that a roller? We'll get that at low tide. I've lost my GoPro at the moment, so I'm recording with a webcam straight to the laptop. Oh. How much do you want to bet that's going to end up in the water? So. Let's bend it out a bit. Ended up playing a whole game of football yesterday with a torn hamstring because we didn't have any subs. Feeling it today. Mr. Hop along. Feel like Daffy. Well, I'm now officially out of rods. This one looks like this. This one looks all lumpy like this, but it was hanging off before. Um, I would grind that and weld more, but I've used up all the rods. I only bought 10. So 10 rods from having the first practice to at least getting that rib in, which means we can put the floor in. That was sort of holding up this job. So that's good, you know, I think it can get you out of an emergency. Uh, 
you know, would you choose to do it this way? No. But can you? Yes. You know, I've, I've ordered that new pack of, I don't know, it was by weight this time, not by rod number. So I'm kind of looking forward to just having heaps more practice. I think it's something you could perhaps master and get a lot of benefit out of being able to do these sorts of repairs on aluminium boats in the field. In the scheme of things, I actually think it went pretty well. The job's not finished because that wasn't enough, but I felt by the end of it that it is a learnable skill. You know, uh, I've ordered a large bunch of new rods. I'm gonna practice a whole ton more here, head back down to the boat and finish the railing and the bowsprit. I'm very comfortable with the rib. Yes, I only showed you the ground welds, which is, you know, the classic cop out. Uh, they weren't mega ugly, but they were definitely too high. I was worried the plywood would actually hit it. The other reason I wanted to grind them is to see how porous they were. And there's quite a lot of solid metal there. I have no concerns about the strength of that rib now, which is great. You know, it's utilitarian, it's done the job. Got the floor back in, which meant I could get the fuel tank in and the job can progress. Videos coming up, I have a couple of outboards. Down here on the floor, we have this outboard. And over here, we have this one. They're both identical outboards. One of those outboards is overheating, so we're gonna do a video very soon on what the cause of that is and how to fix it. Uh, but I'm also going to do a public live stream next weekend. I'll give you the exact time and date, but it'll definitely be next weekend. I'm gonna to commit to it, because I'm keen to start doing a lot more live streaming. Uh, and in that case, we're gonna do a few jobs, uh, clean some carburetors, uh, take a look at the accumulator from my water system, all sorts of little things whilst having a chat and answering questions at the same time. So I will see you for the repair video and the live stream very soon. All right, see ya. Everyone getting on a little bit better this morning. <laughs> You're wary. Oh, Daffy. <laughs> you don't like the new stuff in the bowl because it's like dust, it's terrible. It's the trouble. You don't know to open something whether it's any good or not. What do you think of it? Oh, good. At least someone's eating it. it. Wasn't a complete waste of money. Maybe you two should try a little bit as well. Good. See, it's not that bad after all. It's not that great, but it's not that bad. <laughs> what are you squeaking about, Daisy? You weren't alone for long, the buddy's turned up. <laughs> Not going to share, are you? Come on. Let's spread them out. If I spread them out far enough, you don't fight over them. See? It's not hard. Uh-oh. Here comes the cockatoo. Lurking in the background. Wondering what they're eating. Play nicely. Not that Daffy ever does.
You better hurry, he's getting braver. Not much left, you're a bit late. <laughs> There's a couple left, that's it. You're going for the packet, are you? You're not silly. <laughs> you cheeky bugger. There you go. You can have some too.